Hello friends, I'm a master Leo Genkin. I got my jewelry education in Moscow approximately 40 years ago. And until today, I do my lovely job. Uh, now, I want to show you the initial, initial steps in creating a frog necklace. We begin by making a series of sketches. The first one is a rough sketch that shows the general idea. As the frogs begin, the central frog and their progression in size as they move away from the center. From here, we move to the second sketch, which shows a little bit more details, where the idea takes a more specific form. Here, we can already see the shapes of the frogs and their movements. Here is the central frog. And between the frogs are the bamboo sticks. We chose them to use as a connecting element between each figure. Here, we also considered adding bamboo leaves covered in enamel as a different and contrasting decoration element. All the way from the central frog set with a gemstone to the lock in the back. You can see how the bamboo sticks connect each piece in the necklace, creating a single fragment of two frogs and a stick. Later, we decided to remove the bamboo sticks and set the frogs as the only element of the necklace. Following these rough sketches, I am starting to work on composition. To make the whole thing look good, it's important to convey the movement of frogs. In particular, you can see one of the frogs in the middle. It's gently sitting down, ready to jump. Then we work on other pieces, showing them at different points of times as they jump. In the next sketch, the necklace gradually gains more details. The movements of each frog is more precise. Here, we also consider a version where the central frog is turned in the direction opposite of other frogs movement. And as this line clearly demonstrates, the central frog is moved slightly lower. Keep in mind that this is not a specific requirement. We only have a general vision of the future necklace. And the details can change as we see fit in the process of making. Another sketch shows the distribution of these frogs. There are four of them going in each direction, plus the one in the middle. Altogether, nine fragments in total. Empty spaces in between the frogs are filled with a large gems, such as the Baroque pearls, and another empty spaces are filled with the color diamonds and gems. And the frogs themselves will all be cut to fit the gems or color diamonds on the back and the side of each frogs. You can also see the motion of frogs and how it changes as they move in dimensions. The central one sits on its chest and as they progress down the necklace they change their positions all the way towards the lock on the back. After this sketch is done I finally draw each frog in detail and make one last adjustment by turning the frogs in opposite directions. It doesn't really matter how they are composed, those depending on the customer's wish. They can be made in any way. Here you can also see the lock shown from above, which we were planning to make in a large pearl who will cut half and half, 
lock will be inside the pearl and push button will be making from with the diamond. Now we are moving on to making the wax model of the necklace. To create a model we take a piece of hard pressed green wax, press it tightly onto the iron lady in the approximately location of where the frog will be. And uh, here you can see it taking the some shapes as the surface of the iron lady. Here I draw a contour of the frog and carve it out. The first rough model it looks like that. Here is the bottom part. You can see how tightly it sits and does leave any empty space underneath. Then I slowly start adding details. Here you can see that it's empty. I curved everything from the inside to make it lighter. To get inside, I cut off its front legs, they are also empty. When I will start casting, they will come in back. The same thing I did with its knees, here and there, and I also drill a hole all the way through there to empty it out more. And here it's sitting perfectly on that necklace. Now, take a look at that blue line of the Iron Lady. It divides the neck perfectly in the middle and it helped me to distribute the mass of the necklace equally. Before I start working with the wax, I make a little sculpting of the frog. That white on the left. This is done so I could see its movement better. How it stretch out and jump. We don't need a lot of details on this one. Now, I want to show you the frog that's already casted in silver. Actually, it's the same frog. You can see that they are exactly identical, except this one in, is in motion. If the other one was stretched out, she will look the same. Here is how it looks like. It's also empty inside, just like the last one. Now I place that frog here, and so we begin building up the necklace. <clears throat> For that, I used the small frogs I made before. They are not from this necklace, but they serve us as a guidance to help me distribute the mass and show the motion. Here you can clearly see them shifting in dimensions. Here is a frog slowly shifting from the plane to the other one near the lock. Next step is to place the gems to fill the empty space between the frogs. Here is, in particular, you see the black baroque pearl. The rest of the empty space will be filled with the color of colorful gems or diamonds and through the gems I will pass the connecting elements between the frogs. Well, that's about it. This is how we create the model of that necklace in three dimensions. The next step is to finish other figures. Turn them into silver and place the gems. But that 
will be in the next video.